Ella Josephine Baker, December 13, 1903 to December 13, 1986, was an African American civil rights and human rights activist. She was a largely behind the scenes organizer whose career spanned more than five decades. In New York City and the South, she worked alongside some of the most noted civil rights leaders of the 20th century, including W.E.B. Du Bois, Thurgood Marshall, A. Philip Randolph, and Martin Luther King Jr. She also mentored many emerging activists, such as Diane Nash, Stokely Carmichael, and Bob Moses, as leaders in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. Baker criticized professionalized, charismatic leadership. She promoted grassroots organizing, radical democracy, and the ability of the oppressed to understand their worlds and advocate for themselves. She realized this vision most fully in the 1960s as the primary advisor and strategist of the SNCC. Biographer Barbara Ransby calls Baker, one of the most important American leaders of the 20th century and perhaps the most influential woman in the civil rights movement. She is known for her critiques of both racism in American culture and sexism in the civil rights movement. Ella Josephine Baker was born on December 13, 1903, in Norfolk, Virginia, to Georgiana, called Anna, and Blake Baker, and first raised there. She was the second of three surviving children, bracketed by her older brother Blake Curtis and younger sister Maggie. Her father worked on a steamship line that sailed out of Norfolk, and so was off and away. Her mother took in boarders to earn extra money. In 1910, Norfolk had a race riot in which whites attacked black workers from the shipyard. Her mother decided to take the family back to North Carolina while their father continued to work for the steamship company. Ella was seven when they returned to her mother's rural hometown near Littleton, North Carolina. As a child, Baker grew up with little influence. Her grandfather Mitchell had died, and her father's parents lived a day's ride away. She often listened to her grandmother, Josephine Elizabeth, Bett, Ross, tell stories about slavery and leaving the South to escape its oppressive society. At an early age, Baker gained a sense of social injustice, as she listened to her grandmother's horror stories of life as an enslaved person. Her grandmother was beaten and whipped for refusing to marry an enslaved man her owner chose, and told Ella other stories of life as an African-American woman during this period. Giving her granddaughter context to the African-American experience helped Baker understand the injustices black people still faced. Ella attended Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina, and graduated with valedictorian honors. Decades later, she returned to Shaw to help found SNCC. Baker worked as editorial assistant at the Negro National News. In 1930, George Schuyler, a black journalist and anarchist, and later an arch-conservative, founded the Young Negroes Cooperative League, YNCL. It sought to develop black economic power through collective networks. They conducted conferences and trainings in the 1930s in their attempt to create a small, interlocking system of cooperative economic societies throughout the U.S. for black economic development. Having befriended Schuyler, Baker joined his group in 1931 and soon became its national director. Baker also worked for the Workers' Education Project of the Works Progress Administration, established under President Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal. Baker taught courses in consumer education, labor history, and African history. She immersed herself in the cultural and political milieu of Harlem in the 1930s, protesting Italy's invasion of Ethiopia and supporting the campaign to free the Scottsboro defendants in Alabama. She also founded the Negro History Club at the Harlem Library and regularly attended lectures and meetings at the YWCA. During this time, Baker lived with and married her college sweetheart, T.J., Bob, Roberts. They divorced in 1958. Baker rarely discussed her private life or marital status. According to fellow activist Bernice Johnson Reagan, many women in the civil rights movement followed Baker's example, 
adopting a practice of dissemblance about their private lives that allowed them to be accepted as individuals in the movement. <laughs>